the title you see before you is not uh, technological blasphemy. I mean it when I say that MLB The Show 12 has done at least one aspect, a major aspect in my eyes of franchise better than any of the last 10 MLB The Shows combined. Mind you, it's literally one aspect. Welcome back to the only, and believe me, I've double-checked this, the only podcast that focuses on franchise gaming, Franchise Ain't Dead podcast here on State of the Franchise Gaming on YouTube or whatever podcatcher you may be listening to this on. Um, in fact, I'm going to pretty soon attempt to get my video podcast to Spotify because I know that Spotify is finally allowing everybody to do video podcasts and I need to be a part of that. Let's be real. We are talking about MLB The Show 12. If my computer would listen to me, there we are. As you see on the right hand side of the screen, this is a major portion of the game that has been uh, removed. Um, I thought it was in MLB The Show 13. It is not. MLB The Show 12 was the last game to have any type of financial budgeting over business overview that us, the player, is able to control. When you jump into budgets, you've got the facilities, which are things like your aerobics room, your weight room, rehab facilities. You got the weight room, the aerobics room, the pool, and the auto pitcher. And there is a current condition in which you have to maintain it, especially for certain advertisements that you will get or that you can get uh, in order to get full payment, which I'll show you on a completely different screen. The rehab facilities like in the training room, MRI, spa room, and the, the massage room, things that help your players stay better for longer. Now, I do not remember there being a fatigue bar like there has been for, I want to say since ps4 since the ps4 mlb the show was on to the present day so i would think that you know maintaining these kind of facilities would help in your players playing longer um you know them being able to recover from you know the arduous journey of a 162 game season played in no less than 100 sorry no more than 187 days as written down in the MLB uh C CBA which I have read through some of it it's interesting stuff um I will touch on very little parts of it in this because I think if they applied some of this stuff, and they might, it might all be under the hood and we don't know, we could have a more robust franchise mode. Now, in current day MLB The Show, or at least since MLB The Show 20, we have had March to October as a means to play through a franchise in a, I guess, franchise light manner. I have touched on it maybe here and there in, I want to say MLB The Show 21, and I don't like it. I don't like it because I like the aspects of being able to manage the full organization or as full as as full of an organization as we are allowed to uh, deal with. When you take a look at the roster, roster maximum for every level of Major League Baseball, Triple A, Double A are 28 with no uh, re player restriction uh, there. So, you know, guys in the major leagues, if they're injured and they're looking to come back, they can be assigned to Triple A and Double A for uh, injury rehab assignments. Double uh, A is 30 players with, you know, two players or one player coach, which honestly, I don't think there's been a player coach in 40 years. Um, you yeah. know. And they can't have more than six years of minor league experience. Uh, the single A level, as you can see, can't have more than five. Uh, rookie ball, both U.S. and rookie international rookie ball, both can't have no more than three players with more than four years of minor league experience. And I think with these restrictions in MLB The Show, none of it matters. Um, you can have a guy down in single A who's been down in the minors their entire their entire baseball playing career. So from, let's say, 18 to 28 or whatever, and they, they decide to retire at age 28, they could have spent their entire career down in A-ball and 
I think them not having even that little, little uh, rule in the game really throws off the, the AI's ability to really understand who is good and who is not. They'll have guys sitting down there, 28, 30, 32 years old. Uh, we honestly don't have any minor leagues uh, stats for them because for whatever reason, SDS has taken it to where I want to say since about MLB The Show 14, maybe 15. I don't exactly remember because honestly, 14, 15, and 16, I did not play. I was worried about graduating in my undergrad degree, which the funny thing is the only way I really use it is this podcast and YouTube. I'm a communications major. Nonetheless, the fact that the game doesn't keep minor league stats is dumb. It's been dumb for ages. I've never understood it. Literally, the second the regular season is over in the minors, the stats disappear. They don't matter. It's almost like you want us to only look at the attributes. I get that the attributes are what qualify a player for a specific overall, and that formula has changed. In fact, in MLB The Show 12, I could not stand this, but I call it the bar error. MLB The Show 13 is when they started to actually put a number next to a player's attributes to actually signify hey this is what this number looks like as a matter of fact i will show you right now we take a look at a uh, starting pitcher for the 2012 houston astros their first year in the american league Juan de rodriguez 33 years old he has the highest overall from what i can see because the bar goes the furthest to the right but if i really wanted to know what is at any of his attributes he uses to be the player that he, he was at the time I have to go through the edit screen and holy cow, I forgot how bad the PS3 looks on my TV. Oh boy. Anyways, he has 90 stamina, 71 uh, pitching clutch, 68 home runs per nine. I'm not going to go through all of them because listen, when you look at these bars without the numbers next to them, there are some, as you can see, between hits per nine and uh, pitching clutch. And unless you really sit in there with the TV right up in your eyeballs, you not you may not be able to tell that he has higher clutch in his hip or not. When it comes to the individual players, it just muddied the water. And I don't know why SDS at the time didn't really think, yo, why are we using bars? Are we trying to confuse people? Like, I can understand this um, from the aspect of, you know, you really might have to really know the players or, you know, it's kind of a, I guess, a hardcore type feature where you're not looking at a number. It was a weird time. It was a very weird time. As a matter of fact, I think between actually the inception, MLB The Show 06, which I have sitting down here, um, through MLB The Show 12, I'm not going to lie. I did not play franchise all that much because the bars frustrated me i wanted numbers the funny thing is 12 years later i almost want the bars to go to come back but when i say that i mean that in the sense that i would like a more hardcore franchise i will talk about that on a completely different episode probably very close to the release of the game i'm gonna show 24 i am still up in the air whether i'm going to get it or not just because i'm not sure what SDS is going to do to really improve franchise. I know what they can do. I have put out a video in the past about two years ago, which I will more than likely rehash and uh, show you guys some of the uh, older, and I mean like older um, features that were in MLB The Show that honestly could freshen things up if they just decided, hey, let's just roll this old one out here. We ain't seen this in about 20 years because y'all remember um, 989 slash Sony San Diego Studios has been making this game since 1998 or 97. 98. No, 1998. I'm going to simulate through this first season. I'm not going to really touch much of anything and we'll see what the money situation is looking like and how current and future and we show games can definitely use this to have at least a more robust franchise experience, at least in this one financial aspect. 
Here's the balance sheet for the end of the 2012 season. As you can see, net income, we lost almost a million and a half dollars because somehow, some way, I think I accidentally auto uh, had the CPU take care of some of the different aspects of, of finance management. And it was very late in the season, so we had no chance to really make any money. Um, as far as our income, we basically got money from facilities, which I'm going to assume are things like the vendors, uh, you know, selling stuff and getting face paint, however that that people pay for it. Um, there was no licensing or ad sales. I didn't take out any loans and shared revenue. That doesn't come into play until the beginning of the next season. As far as our expenses are concerned, I guess when you conflate it to 2024 standards, we didn't spend anywhere near that much. We're at like Oakland A's levels. Of uh, player spending at forty-two million dollars, we did not, uh, we did not have any banking expenses because we did not take out any loans. So there's no interest um, as far as shared revenue. Again, that does not come into play um, until the beginning of the next season, and I, we're at the bottom of the league, and we didn't sell too much as far as tickets are concerned. I can even show y'all. Um, fan support is in like the lower 5% of the bar. <laughs> Player morale is somehow decent. That makes no sense to me. I would think the player morale would be kind of low, just given we stink. And you see my white cat walk across the screen. Piper, no one wants to see your butt. I'm here, kitty. Actually, I think this is the rare cat you guys don't get to see. You see the other th three. I have four. As far as how we can go about making money um, in future MLB The Show games, there are a lot of ways, or a vast a vast majority of revenue MLB teams, and I mean vast majority in the biggest chunk of the pie, is share revenue, assuming you are even out there um, you know, making a ton of money. And that's, I, that even includes teams like the Yankees. Like, they're going to get money because of you know, national uh, TV rights, MLB network, anything that the MLB does to promote the game itself, like the all-star game, home run derby, uh, you know, uh, world series, everybody in the league gets a portion of that evenly across the board. Um, when it comes to the postseason, it is more so uh, depending on, on where you are eliminated if you are eliminated it depends on what greater chunk of that postseason money you get so if you're knocked out in the first round you'll get a small piece if you're the world series champions you will get a significantly larger piece um, which makes sense you do want teams that are winning to continue to be able to put forth a good product and not just blow it up like the two times the Marlins won the World Series, which was really disgusting to watch, especially in 97. Granted, I'm a Yankee fan, so I'm a little biased. I feel like we should have won five in a row, but you know, we didn't take care of business in 97, so unfortunately we weren't able to do so. You know, in 2003, they also had a team that was good enough to actually beat the Yankees that year. Um, I got to say, that Marlins team, uh, yeah, they were good. 03, they were good. Or at least they got extremely high at the right time. And they had, like, all the pieces to counteract what the Yankees did back in 2003. Um, Yankees had good pitching and a good offense, but we couldn't get guys on base. And they had guys like Josh Johnson and... Dontrell Willis out there freaking cooking, not Josh Johnson, Josh Beckett out there cooking us. So we weren't able to take care of business. Granted, this was 21 years ago. As you can see, I'm showing my age. When it comes to in season, remember, you can, well, you can't see it now because it's the end of the regular season. You can set promotions. I would love to see a sort of integration where. The legends are used as a means for promotion. Think about it. Um, Willie Mays is currently was it 93, 94. I think he's the same age as my grandmother. And funny enough, I'm recording at least this portion of it on 
2024, Willie Mays Day as officially recognized by at least the San Francisco Giants. And honestly, I want to see him on the cover of MLB The Show 24, the collector's edition. It would just make sense. And honestly, it would be great to see because I don't know if baseball's really celebrated Willie Mays like that. He is, at the very worst, a top three player of all time. Is more than likely number one. If it ain't him, it's Henry Aaron. If it ain't him, it's probably, I don't know. I don't know. But I know he's up there. He's no worse than three. He's no worse than three. Him and Aaron are both in the top three. Whoever you want to put as that third piece is really up to you. And I don't want to hear the answer, Mike Trout. Anyway, yeah, imagine being able to uh, bring in the legends, even if they're not alive at the current moment, you know, have a tribute day. You know, uh, some players play for multiple teams, so, you know, maybe you could have a appreciation day, kind of like how the Yankees do with Old Timers Day. Granted, I think they're getting low in uh, population as far as the legend players that can come in. Granted, they have won a lot over their 125-year history, so uh, there are a lot of memorable players, and maybe they'll have to dig a little bit into the crates in order to make that happen, but... As far as players that SDS has the rights to in the game, this is an easy way to utilize them outside of them being players um, in franchise mode. Again, think about it. A team like the Houston Astros, who have a number of legends or even just memorable players. They don't have to be really considered the best of the best, the legends. Take a guy like Lance Berkman. Now, granted, he didn't win a World Series with the team, but he was a pretty good player. So why not utilize, assuming he's in any future game, I would love to see him in the game. He was honestly one of my favorite players of the 2000s, um, just because he was a switch hitter. I really feel like he was underrated for what he was. Uh, not the best of fielders, but he was an offensive machine. Uh, that would be great to see his player model. He's probably going to be in some plain clothes. Maybe give him a old, a throwback Houston Astros jersey. Maybe have your throwback jersey sales go up. Granted, merchandise doesn't really account a lot towards uh, the financial well-being of a team. Actually, it doesn't even show up on this balance sheet. But it would help it would help the league it would help more for shared revenue um i know the manufacturers get a decent amount of that and i guess the league just licenses out the team names and stuff like that and i mean, I mean the teams get a small cut but again there are many ways to make there should be many ways to make money to add to our revenue to allow us to actually spend for scouts cuz in the current iteration of MLB the show 23 that is I have tried, I have tried, I have tried. I do not know how to sign a, to fire one scout and sign another, even if I have the staff budget to do so. I don't know how they overlook that. Like, scouts are important, and I should be able to do something besides add these janky DD card like sponsorships to in a three slot thing to even it, it it just feels weird it just feels very weird and i don't feel like i have any control over what is going on mlb the show 12 did it better uh, if you like if you like what i'm putting out please like share subscribe follow comment email me hit me up on on twitter uh, hit me up in the comment section here on youtube i uh, appreciate y'all watching this uh varsity logo you see here i will eventually be talking about them in the very near future i'll holler at y'all later peace out